Hello everyone and welcome to this AWS tutorial. In our tutorial today, I will provide a brief overview on Amazon S3 directory buckets. At the end of this tutorial, I will also give a demo as to how to go about creating directory buckets. So let's get started. Knowledge of Amazon S3 Express One Zone is recommended for this particular tutorial. Now it's not a prerequisite, but if you know what this storage class is all about, it would certainly help because behind the scenes, directory buckets use S3 Express One Zone to store data. So if you want to know more about S3 Express One Zone, please refer to this overview tutorial that I had created some time back. URL to the tutorial is mentioned right here at the bottom. I will also have it mentioned in the description of this video. This is a reference URL that provides additional information about directory buckets. I would certainly recommend that you refer to this URL. I will also have it mentioned in the description of this video. So in case of Amazon S3, we have two types of buckets. First is a general purpose bucket, and second is directory buckets. Now, general purpose buckets are the regular buckets that you have been creating all along. Directory buckets were recently introduced some time back. Now, general purpose buckets are recommended for most use cases and are compatible with most S3 storage classes other than S3 Express One Zone. So it's not compatible with S3 Express One Zone. So this is your normal standard S3 bucket. Now, on the other hand, let's say if you had to create a directory bucket, then directory buckets are typically recommended for performance intensive applications. And they use S3 Express One Zone behind the scenes as their storage class. Now, S3 Express One Zone stores data across multiple devices, but within a single AZ. So directory buckets, since they use S3 Express One Zone storage class, they will give performance. You know, so if your, if your application is a performance intensive application, you can certainly, uh, you know, use this bucket type, but that performance comes with a cost. It comes with certain risk involved. And the risk is that your data is stored in a single AC. And you will notice when we go into the demo that when you try to create a directory bucket, right, it also gives you like a, like a disclaimer saying that you accept this risk that the data is going to be stored in a single AC. So performance comes at, at certain risk. If you're willing to take that risk, then go ahead and use the directory bucket. Since it uses S3 Express One Zone, of course, it's going to provide a single digit millisecond latency. Data is organized in directories as opposed to a flat storage structure in general purpose buckets. So that's one of the key differences between general purpose buckets and directory buckets. Now, while you are creating a directory bucket, it will ask you to select an AWS region and an AWS availability zone. You can create up to 10 directory buckets in an AWS account. Remember that number is at an account level, not at a region level, but at an account level. There is no limit on the number of objects that you can store in a directory bucket. And if there is absolutely no activity, that means there is no request going to into you know, this directory bucket for 90 days, you're not requesting any data. There is no transaction happening. There's absolutely no activity. In that case, after 90 days, it transitions into an inactive state. While in an active state, it becomes temporarily inaccessible for reads and writes. But it will retain all your data and, and, and your stories. So you don't have to worry about whether you lose your data. No, your data will be there. But... The, uh, the bucket is in an inactive state. And yes, you will pay charges while it is in an inactive state, of course, because your data is going to be there. So your charges are applicable. Let's say if a request comes and suddenly, you know, 
you need to access your directory bucket for whatsoever reason. Then if a request is received, in that case, it will transition to an active state. But that is not instantaneous. It takes a few minutes to get there. And during this transitioning period, let's say if there are additional requests or whatever that comes along, you know, you're trying to access your data, then till the time it becomes active, it will return an error code of 503, basically telling you the service is unavailable. So keep this in mind when you use directory buckets. Ensure that there is, you know, certain amount of activity that is always present while you're using directory buckets. Now, directory buckets follow strict naming conventions or rules. A directory bucket name consists of three parts. First is your base name. Right? So that's the name that you give for your bucket. After that is a suffix that contains the ID of your AWS availability zone. And finally, at the end, there's a standard suffix of dash dash x dash s3, this suffix. So let's say if you had to create your directory bucket and you gave the name my bucket name, just like I have given over here. This is the name that you have given. This is the base. Right? So that's the base name. Behind the scenes, you will see that AWS will basically at the end add your AZ ID and your dash dash X dash S3 suffix. So these two suffixes are going to be appended at the end of whatever name that you provide. Now, the S3 bucket name must be unique. It should be between three to 63 characters and that includes the suffix. It can only uh, contain lowercase letters, numbers, and hyphens. And it has to begin and end with a letter or a number. Now, you don't have to worry about the end because at the end you have S3. So you have to ensure that there is either a letter or, or a number at the beginning. And it must include the following suffix. That is your AZ ID and the dash dash X dash S3. Don't worry about, you know, how are you going to uh, add the suffix, etc. Whatever base name that you provide, it will automatically add this particular suffix to it. So let me now go to my console. So this is S3. And I let's create a bucket over here now. So this is create bucket. And I am in North Virginia. That's the region that has been selected. Now either you can create a general purpose bucket or either you can create a directory bucket. Now Let's scroll down. And as you see, I've selected this uh, AWS region. And here it is going is asking me basically to select an availability zone. So let's say I'm going to select this availability zone. Now, this is a disclaimer that I was talking about, right? So it's, it's basically telling me that directory buckets store data across multiple devices within a single AZ, but do not store redundantly across multiple AZs. So you will have to acknowledge that in case there is, you know, some kind of an outage or something and the data might be unavailable or in worst case scenario, the data might be lost. So as I said, whatever it, performance that you will gain by using a directory bucket or by using S3 Express one zone behind the scenes, that performance is going to come at a cost and you will have to acknowledge this. Now over here is asking me to give a base name. So let's say I'm going to say my DIR bucket name. So if you see, I gave the base name over here. This is the availability zone suffix. So you can see availability zone and then the standard suffix at the end. And this is my full bucket name. So basically it's your base name, then your availability zone, and then the standard uh, suffix of that dash dash x dash s3. And then you can keep everything standard, assuming that you know this name is available and the full bucket name is available, we should not have any issues creating 
this particular bucket. So let's click on create bucket. And a bucket was created successfully right here. So if you see, I have two directory buckets and one general purpose bucket, right? So again, if you see over here, this is the general purpose bucket that I created. And I get the option of emptying the bucket or deleting the bucket. But if I go to directory buckets and I select one of my buckets, again, I get empty and delete. But along with empty and delete, something very interesting happened. You get an option of import. So if you click on import, right, it will basically tell you that Im import simplifies copying objects from general purpose bucket to a directory bucket using batch operations. So right now, this particular facility is available. That means you can use behind the scenes a batch operation to copy objects from general purpose bucket to directory bucket. Right now, the vice versa is not available. Hopefully in the future, it may be, we will see. But I just wanted to bring this to your attention that, hey, something like this, it's also possible. And you will see this only with directory buckets. So over here, when you go into buckets, and if you select one of your directory buckets, that's when the import option comes in, right? So this is how you go about, uh, you know, creating your uh, directory bucket. If you want, you can go and empty it and you can basically say permanently delete. I mean, there is nothing to delete over here. So I'm going to cancel this operation. And let's say if you had to delete it, delete, and then you will have to give a bu the bucket name that you gave earlier, copy it here and delete bucket. So hopefully this gave you uh, a decent idea about directory buckets. Do explore this particular feature and let me know your experience. This is it from me today. I will see you shortly in some other video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.